Our next study question is, who wins the trumpet number four war? In Revelation 8 verse 12, then the fourth angel, this is the fourth of seven trumpet blasts that were given in sequence in the book of Revelation, the fourth angel sounded, the third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. Verse 13, And I looked and I heard an angel flying, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So this is the fourth trumpet that has been sounded. There's a third of the sun and moon and stars can't be seen. Then he sees his angel saying, Woe, woe, woe for the next three trumpets. So we've got the fourth sounding, fourth trumpet sounding. Then we're going to have the fifth trumpet, the sixth trumpet, and the seventh trumpet. And the woe number two, or the sixth trumpet, is a war that the beast wins. And woe number three is the seventh trumpet. And that's a war with Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ wins that. For now, we will look at the mighty many nation world war before the last two woes. So we've seen, we've looked at the Jesus war, the trumpet number seven, the beast wins the war, trumpet number six, and now we're going to look at the war of trumpet number four. Now, trumpet number four may not look like a war to most people when they first read this. I'll read it again, Revelation 8, 12. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So, in a geographical location somewhere on the earth, they cannot see the sun and the moon and the stars. Now, we should consider that trumpet number four is what results after trumpets numbers one, two, and three occur. Let me show you what I mean. Revelation 8 verse 7, the first angel, the first trumpet is sounded, the first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third part of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. So something was thrown, something came down out of the sky, and a third of the trees were burned up. That is one unbelievable set of circumstances. And all green grass was burned up. That was trumpet number one, Revelation 8.8. 8. Then the second angel, the second trumpet sounds, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown, comes out of the sky, thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Verse 9, and a third of the living creatures in the sea, under the water in the sea, died, and a third of the ships in the sea were destroyed. That sounds like a military action, doesn't it? Okay, that's the trumpet number two. Revelation 8.10, and the third angel sounded. Okay, this is trumpet number three. And a great star fell from heaven. Again, something, he's seeing this in vision, he sees something in all three of these cases come down to earth and create devastation and destruction. A great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and a third of the springs of water. Verse 11, and the name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood and many men died from the water because the water was made bitter. Now, there's bitter water, and then there's radioactive water where you die if you drink radioactive water. So, items are seen coming down from the sky causing great destruction in trumpets numbers one, two, three. And then we get trumpet number four, which is a description of the fact 
that in that location, in that geographical location, you can no longer see the sun or the moon or the stars. So then trumpet number four describes the resulting conditions of trumpets numbers one, two, and three. Daniel 11 makes this even more clear. Daniel 11, 44 says, but news from the east and the north trouble him, a great military leader. Therefore, he, the military leader, shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And that's what happens. He does it. He goes out to, with great fury, to destroy and annihilate many. And that's what happens. In the 21st century language, this result of destroying and annihilating many is far beyond conventional weapon warfare. You, you, you cannot just annihilate and destroy two great military powers, one in the north and one in the east, with military, regular conventional military hardware. All right, in, in, uh, <coughs> It is, it is common knowledge to most people that nuclear war will bring about nuclear winter, which causes the sun and the moon, etc., not to be seen. When Mount St. Helens blew, there was ash thrown up into the sky, and people, there was dust particles everywhere, and people couldn't see the sun, the moon, and the stars. And, and it's our understanding, our, our scientific understanding, that if you have nuclear war, you create a situation where you can't see the sun, the moon, and the stars in the nuclear winter zone. Daniel 11.44 speaks of a mighty military power that has captured Egypt and many other Middle Eastern nations and now destroys nations to the north and to the east. Now, when we compare Daniel 11.44 and Daniel 11.41, we see that the first half of this war, trumpet war number four, the first half of this war is conventional weapons and conventional soldiers and conventional results to where the spoils of war are still intact. If it was a nuclear attack, the spoils of war are pink mist, they're all gone. Daniel 11, 41, and he shall also enter the glorious land, the land of Palestine, uh, Israel, the land of Israel, and many countries shall be overthrown, it tells us. Okay, so in verse 42, he shall stretch out his hand against the countries, again, takes many countries, and the land of Egypt will not escape. So it, 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 he enters the glorious land of Israel, many other nations are attacked and captured, Egypt is captured, verse 43, and he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all of the precious things of Egypt. So this is a conventional war because he has got soldiers on the ground and he has power to do with the treasures of gold and silver and the precious things of Egypt as he wishes. Now the second part of this trumpet number four war is obviously not conventional warfare. So it's a two-part world war where part of it is conventional and that stirs up the mighty nations and that brings on the second part of the war which just can't be conventional weaponry. You, too much devastation and too much, uh, you take out two mighty military powers how can you do that without nuclear weapons? Daniel 11, 44, I'm sorry, 42. And he shall stretch out his hand against the countries, multiple nations, the land of Egypt shall not escape, and he shall have power over the treasures of silver and gold, the precious things. Okay, I read that, now I skip down to verse 44. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Okay, this is a military power He's got boots on the ground, he's captured Egypt, he's captured many nations that went, that surround Israel, right? So right now many nations want to attack Israel and Israel wants to defend itself against many nations. 
And so we have a situation where the many nations in the vicinity of Israel get captured, including Egypt. So it says news from the east and the north of that Middle Eastern region trouble him. So if he's a mighty military power that's with conventional weaponry captured many nations in the Middle East, what kind of nation would it need to be? What kind of military power would it need to be in the north and in the east to trouble him? If it was a little teeny tiny pipsqueak, uh, you know, Turkmenistan or some, some little country that had very, very little military power, why would it bother him? Why would it even trouble him? It'd be, he could take that nation too, easily. Therefore, it says in verse 44, Therefore he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. So, one great military power to destroy and annihilate two other mighty military powers takes much more than conventional weapons. Daniel 11.45 shows the end situation of this trumpet number four war. And we're asking the question, who wins? Who wins this trumpet number four war? Now the war winner moves his headquarters to Israel. We see that in Daniel 11, 40, 45. And he shall plant the tents of his, he shall plant the tents of his uh, headquarters in Israel, it, of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. So he wins trumpet number four, war. He, plant, he moves his headquarters. He plants the tent of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain in Jerusalem. Yet he shall come to his end and no one shall help him. So he wins the war. He moves his headquarters and then he comes to his end. So, I mean, all right, great. He won the war. But now he's come to his end. Oh boy, not so good. So who is this king of the north? that wins the trumpet number war, the trumpet number four war. We have three possible kings to choose from. Daniel 11, 18 through Daniel 11, 20 show us a sequence of three kings of the north. <clears throat> and king of the north, number three, sets up the abomination of desolation. It's plain in scripture, that's what he does. Then he destroys the nation of Israel and he is thrown into the lake of fire by Jesus, the Lamb of God. That was king number three. So we go back to king number two, and he is seen in Daniel 11.20. Daniel 11.20, it says, There shall arise in his place, replacing the first king in the sequence, one who imposes taxes on the glorious kingdom, on the Israeli people. He, this second world leader is going to impose taxes on the Israeli people. So they're still there and they're still working and they're still able to pay taxes. But within a few days she shall be destroyed, not in anger or in battle. So the second king is only around for, two, for a few days. So king number two replaces king number one, imposes taxes on the Israeli people and is destroyed within a few days. Now king number one enters Israel and at the same time captures many of Israel's enemies. Daniel 11, 41, He shall enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. So you have to ask the question, did he enter Israel to attack them, and at the same time attack all these other nations? Or did he enter the glorious land to protect them, and so by capturing many other nations that get overthrown, protect the glorious land? Verse 42, He'll stretch out his hand against the countries and the land of Egypt will not escape. So king number one wins this trumpet number four war. It is this first king of the three king sequence that wins this trumpet number four war. <clears throat> 